for sure. Looking back, I realize it's been you loving me. Through my fears I've learned to see, and with these tears my strength to be all I can be to you, as now through my heart I see. Take my hand until the very end with each breath my... This is Pop and Fresca Journal and we're here with amazing tenor, the Tenor of Illusions, Joseph Vanilla. And this is a special circle of uh, AP Music Entertainment interviews with Pop and Fresca Journal and we're here with Joe Wolpes himself, a great maestro. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming. Yes, he is great. <laughs> but thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's been an amazing journey for you, and I know your music and your voice uh, shock so many people because it's so powerful. And frankly, I can say you, you sing like Luciano Pavarotti. Oh, thank you. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> Beautiful, bravo, bravo. And as I've learned, your teacher was the same as uh, that phenomena that we witnessed. Yeah, yeah, Joan Dorneman. Uh, who is at the Metropolitan Opera. She's a, uh, an assistant conductor and she was a vocal coach uh, to many uh, opera singers. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was Pavarotti's uh, opera coach for 30 years. Oh. And so she's been helping me. Yeah. Now it's been an amazing to me that you can combine illusions uh, and sleight of hand and uh, tenor singing. That is incredible. Yeah, that was something that actually came along in the last five years mm -hmm. and um, when I was a child I loved magic. Mm -hmm. I'd go to the magic stores, I was in magic school for three years, mm -hmm. I'd go to the magic conventions. I started when I was about six or seven years old. I create my own illusions too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, the, the magic tricks that I do since I was a kid couldn't afford them, I would make my own. And um, so the day came when I realized that I could sing and have been a, had a very successful career just singing and also conducting. I'm also a musical director, so I did a lot of work in churches and temples. And the day came when I said, you know, I really have to do something more special if I want to, like, advance and get, get uh, you know, better career going and make more money and, and share my talent with a lot more people. So I decided... Why not combine these two elements of magic and voice, you know, and singing? And so that's exactly what I did. So the last five years I've been working on this show. It's called Illusionaria. 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 What's it called? Illusionaria. Aria of illusions. <laughs> Illusionaria. Right, so you get all these grand illusions in the show uh, and uh, with really great singing and uh, uh, Joe has a song he wrote for me called Trust in Me, which is featured in my show as well. And it's, I know it's a very romantic, very kind of like love story, that something that sometimes makes people liking, so it gives you that uh, beautiful sense of emotions. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, the, sh the show takes you on a journey, it's like a love story. Mm -hmm. Boy meets girl, girl rejects boy, you know, the old timeless, uh, story of right. unrequited love, but uh, ends in uh, on a very positive and happy note. Yeah, it makes her disappear forever. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that one of your magic tricks was also with birds and things like that, and you actually used it together with the combining with arias that you sang right. and uh, your magic tricks. So right. they made really good sense with each other. Right. A about a year ago, uh, one of my friends, Sergio Sigras, mm -hmm. Um, he's a, a developer and engineer, and he had uh, an electronic piece of apparatus that I looked at and I said, 
could you change this and do this and change this with it? I think I could make a magic trick with this. So after all said and done, we were able to create animatronics handkerchiefs that act just like birds. I mean, they look cool. They're, they're, they're fun to watch. Uh -huh. And uh, because they're programmable, I can do anything I want with them. So they can respond to what's happening in the show. Mm -hmm. They can sit on my shoulder and then we can have a conversation. They can kiss me, you know, we can, whatever. And so these birds are in the show and they happen to be a part of a song called Rondine al Nido, which uh, means uh, like the homing pigeons. Yeah. All right, so the song talks about how these pigeons have become my friends. And um, they always leave, but they always come back. You know, pulling pigeons, that's what they do. They bring their message, and then they come back. They, they come back. So uh, in this song, the homing pigeon doesn't return. Mm -hmm. So in my show, I have a birdcage, which I place the pigeons in, a few of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I make them all disappear, the cage and everything. All of it. Yeah, so what I've done is I've been able to replace Dove's livestock mm -hmm. with this handkerchief. And so yeah. it's, uh, it's actually on the market too. So mm -hmm. for magicians who want to mm -hmm. you know, perform without livestock and uh, still be able to use a lot of the great you know, uh, magic tricks that require you know, bird cages or th those sorts of things. And it's amazing because I've read that your whole magic shows like David Copperfield Plus, you have a huge combination with, of course, with the music and with the singing. Yeah. How, how are you able to sing at the same time as performing the magic tricks? Because I know both elements, they require a lot of attention and a lot of details. Well, I'll tell you, the key that, that I have found mm -hmm. is I know these songs so well. Mm -hmm. I know them in my sleep because mm -hmm. I've been singing them and listening to them since I was a kid with my grandmother who used to listen to the Italian radio. Oh. So all of these songs, I mean, I know them so well. That's why I can take more of my attention and bring it to the acting and the magic because the words are just there like, like, I don't know. Naturally. Yeah, I don't have like to even really think about the words. I just think of the meaning of the words and, and uh, the beautiful orchestra music that is playing which is that powerful sound that, yes. that uh, makes this show very different than any other magic show. It's because we have an Emmy Award winning orchestra playing I the music, that, yes. which is um, phenomenal. They're, and they're, they're great, the Macedonia Radio Symphony Orchestra. And uh, they will also be doing the, uh, the orchestration uh, for our next the song next that we're mm -hmm. doing called Never Stop Loving You. Yeah. They did trust in me also? Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. Yes, now, they did. now, Joe, when you started to work with Joe Spinella, uh, how did you uh, get together and what provoked you to write the music for him and so on and so forth? We were doing a radio show. Mm -hmm. I was doing a radio show with somebody else, I can't remember his name, um, up in Connecticut. And he had handed me your CD. That's exactly how we, we were introduced. And the guy I was working with, was, you know, it was good, it was nice, whatever. I, I, honestly, there was a few guys I was up there with. But I heard his CD on the way home, and I just stopped. I'm like, wow. I said, this is incredible. And then I made the phone call, literally, from the car, saying, we have to work with this guy. And um, obviously, I don't remember who the other guy was. I feel bad about that now. But, <laughs> um, but you know, that's, that's, that's honesty. I mean, I didn't, you know. But I heard, I, I, I heard Joe, and I just said, this is great. Uh, we had gotten together, I think. Um, and you came here. And I was surprised you didn't have any original music in your show. And when you hear the voice, you're just like, wow, this is like, you know, this is the next coming. You know, I'm like, wow, maybe we found something here. Mm -hmm. And um, I had worked on a song. I said, check this out. And if initially, you know, he would, like he said, he's been trained to sing. And he's been studying and passionate and dedicated to a certain repertoire or style of, since he was a little boy. So here's an original song. And I think at first, and I knew, like I, I, I took my time out before he came here, and I said, this is great. I mean, I, I had like five different ideas I was sketching, but this one idea just sort of wrote itself. And Joe heard it, and he liked it, and then he sort of started making, then we stopped, then he started giving, you know, respectfully, <laughs> started giving me the artist approach, which was like, well, do a couple more of these, a couple more of that, and I was like, Pfft. I said, that's your single. I said, if you don't like it, it don't get better than that. He's like. Great, let's do a single. <laughs> and you know, so I, would, I, I, I had a little bit of skepticism because 
coming from the classical world. Right. You know, and then he said, well, no, you can, you can cross over into this more pop world. It's, it's okay. I said, with my voice? Well, And we didn't mean pop. We meant like pop like all of Josh Groban, but Shelly. Right. I meant that. Right. You know, right. he was probably thinking like, you know. It's like Sarah Brightman did the crossover. One too. Republic. Yeah. So I thought about it for two minutes. I said, okay, I trust you. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I told him, I said, I, I knew it was a marriage. And you know something? Sometimes the producer and or the writer, you take that chance. You cross that bridge because the artist might say, okay, we're done. Mm -hmm. But I knew where I was going with it and I knew what I liked about his voice. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you could tell me to write a hundred of these. It's not going to get... But that, 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 that's the best starting point we have. And then after we develop that, which you'll get a copy of that, or you probably have I've heard it already, um, Never Stop Loving You, the new single, is just wow. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, this is, there's nothing else like this out there, which is what you know, I think got me so attracted to it. And you know, we get along, we have a good time. It's not like we just work. You know, we go and hang out and have coffee and talk about other if, things. If you don't have a like-mindedness right. with a person in business mm -hmm. or in friendship, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Not you have to spend, work. like we, we spend hours, like what was that studio in the city, Avatar? Mm -hmm. We cut the vocal. I mean, the day went by like that, we were there for like four or five hours. It was, I mean, that gig was so much fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything went perfect that day. I actually, I had, and I never told you this, I had another job that night in another studio. I was so elated after that session. I think we had like dinner or lunch afterwards. We're hanging out. Yep, yep. And I'm like, after you left to go back, to Florida or wherever you were traveling to, I just walked around going, what an amazing day. I completely forgot about what else I had to do until I got a phone call saying, you know there's a whole band here waiting for you, right? And I'm like, gee, I'm stuck on the train. And I'm like, I was like literally sitting on the bridge. I was coming back to Jersey going, you know. And, uh, but that's how amazing it's been because it's just effortless. Well, because sometimes I feel you're like in that zone, and it's it's almost like remember when you said that grand hurrah? That is the grand hurrah when you feel that certain way. Oh yeah. yeah. Music. Oh yeah. And that's what you live for. It. Like in this situation. business, you live for that. Yeah. At least I do. I, uh, you know, getting those great moments uh, in the recording studio where I'm on a roll. I don't want to stop. I could go eight hours, and everyone's like, "Okay, Joe, it's time to stop." But they've been it's been eight hours. So what? I'm on a roll. We can't stop now. Well, that's a consistency with good artists. Mm -hmm. The ones that take breaks after 10 minutes are the ones you pretty much don't end up staying with. You know, the high-maintenance artists. There are a lot of high-maintenance people that work all day, but the ones that don't put their time in, you know, it's evident you're not going the distance. You have to love yeah. it. And then going back to your roots, I know you were mentioned about your grandmother the, and your family. Could you tell me how did your grandmother was influencing you? Well, first music? of all, she fed me a lot. Oh, but they cooked the best. It was great. They cooked the best. It was great. I didn't complain. <laughs> but now it's, it's always a challenge to, you know, try to keep the pounds yeah. off. But uh, but she believed in me from day one. No matter what I did, she would always encourage me. She told me. Back in the day when I was just starting to sing, you're going to surpass Pavarotti. You're going to surpass Caruso. You're going to surpass all the great tenors. And it's like, and it was like, I was horrible when I started. And so she heard something. I don't know what, but she heard something. And she never stopped encouraging me. So, and so I, I learned a lot from my grandmother. And she taught me how to cook, too. So that's a big Great deal. cook. Yeah. He makes a Italian? lasagna that's off the hook. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's my specialty. Now, where were you born? I was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Oh man, you should so lie. You, you, <laughs> but I only lived there oh. for like a couple of months, uh -huh. and then my family moved to Wayne, New Jersey. Uh -huh. Oh, you should have lied there. Oh, <laughs> and then after that, I was there for a few years, and then my family dead. moved to Sarasota, Florida. Oh, that's a. So, with the exception of being. Um, in New York City for my education, I went to Manhattan School of Music, which I'm a graduate of, mm -hmm. um, after, you know, post high school in, in Florida. Uh, I've, you know, been trying to get to this area as much as possible. Where were you born? <clears throat> well, I was born in New York, which is nice. That's not specific enough. But then if I was to lie <laughs> and I was in your shoes, I would say a little province just outside of Palermo, Italy, with 40 people in the town, and one convenience store, 40 miles away down the street from the volcano. It was bliss. <laughs> I was alive. Born and raised really from York. Italy, from a Sicilia. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And uh, from a little town called Castel Termini. Yeah. 
custard cannoli. <laughs> now, I was uh, actually paying attention. The songs that you sing mostly ne Neapolitan songs. Well, because they're popular, mm -hmm. people know them, and I find if you sing things that people recognize, they really appreciate it. And so, the, the Neapolitan songs that I had arranged mm -hmm. and recorded, they're a breath of fresh air. These arrangements are up to date. Mm -hmm. um, so when Italians listen to it in Italy, they're floored by it because it's so, it's so fresh mm -hmm. and it's not like they're used to hearing all the time. So, so they love that. And so people love that. If you give them something that they know, they've heard, uh, they're happy. Absolutely. And, and you gotta, you, you, you got to make money to eat. And so you got to do yes. what people <laughs> will, will pay for it. Now, I know you've been touring as well. Uh, well, so yeah, the 12 shows in Florida. Yeah, the, the 12 shows that I did in Venice, Florida. That, yes. that's a sh that was a tour. That, and that, that was, was cool. There was uh, 12 shows, mm -hmm. and it went really well. I had standing ovations every night. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, I think, a real great indication for me that people loved the show. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the people who came from the newspaper, they couldn't believe it either. They were like, we never seen anything like this. but. But they were all like taking me aside at the end of each performance and saying, "Surely you, you could not have sung all right. of these shows." They all say that. Shows. It's like, "Surely you must be lip syncing." Yeah. And I was like, I was actually taken aback that actually someone would say that to me that I'd be lip syncing. And they pulled me aside and I'm like, "Come on, <laughs> we know he's full of it. You're the producer, tell us." And I'm like, "Tell him he's singing. I'm not. Yeah, you know, he's singing." And they don't believe it. People are funny. Well, they call me the singing machine at the Met. How are you able to do that? Tell me if there's this particular technique you think, or if there is a way of uh, learning that way, because it's a lot of physical movements on stage. Yes. And you know, the frame when you're standing, mm -hmm. it's a certain say, way you have to stand in yeah. order the voice go the right way. Right, well, technique. Mm -hmm. Without a really great technique, and I was fortunate enough to learn from the great masters of opera, the great opera stars that retired were my teachers. Mm -hmm. and when you have great technique and you take time to develop it and not abuse it, then you can sing f for long, long periods of time and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Today I feel that a lot of teaching is let's get them in and out as fast as we can so that people can go out and start making money, but yet they don't have the opportunity to really take the time to develop a strong, strong technique. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's the key in staying healthy and living healthy uh, that's uh, that's the key to my success, and, mm -hmm. and I feel I can sing forever. Now, what are your favorite arias that you would like love performing? And besides, I know Joe music is amazing. Uh, of course, too. it's the one that I <laughs> Well, the arias after the two songs that I wrote. Well, no, no, he wrote. he is a fantastic. They're not arias. He's a fantastic coach in the studio. He coaches you as well. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I mean, producing. I mean, he. Well, He's his own vocal machine, but in the studio, I direct him. And well, he, he knows what's going to appeal. He's on the other side of the microphone. I'm, I'm, I'm singing, but he's on the other side. He sees what's coming through those speakers, and he knows what's going to uh, be just the right way of singing phrases, you know, uh, if you need to pull back or, or give more. Mm -hmm. He's great at that, and I, I love that when, when we get in the studio. Um, yeah, by the time we're done, I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm That's very it. coachable. <laughs> no, he's good. Actually, I get to scream, jump up and down. He's like, okay, I'll do it again. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> one more time? Yeah, and, and of course, it's always the ninth hour when you're working on the one small little phrase that you have to do a hundred times. Remember, the ninth hour. It's hard. You but, you know, that's perfection. perfection is worth that last minute. How do you know it's a perfection? You just know. I mean, you go for everything you can, and if you feel one hesitation of getting an extra take, you know you got to get it because it means it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. But that last ounce of what it takes is always what is needed, mm -hmm. and you never settle for less because that's everybody else. You got you got to always think not like everybody else. Now, when are you recording? Do you record the orchestra separately and then your vocals as well, and then you combine together? How how does the whole process happen? Mm -hmm. Because well, the result is incredible. This next track, unless mm -hmm. you want to explain it, I know. Go ahead. This next track, um, you know, the the building of it um, was the rhythm section mm -hmm. and the scratch vocal to really get. Uh, and I wanted to record this next track as live as possible. So the whole band was in the room, and Joe was in the room, and everything went down together for the live nuances. And it was all top session players. 
with that, we take that rough mix and uh, it goes to the orchestra in Macedonia. Macedonia, right. And then George Mancini. 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 Uh, Mancini. Mancini. Supposed to say Mancini. Mancini. <laughs> who's phenomenal, is going to uh, orchestrate, arrange, and you know, score basically the whole Macedonian Radio Symphony Orchestra to the live, you know, edited, you know, the, 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 the temporary final mm -hmm. rhythm section. Once I get all the strings from him, um, then I do a rough mix, give it to him. Mm -hmm. We lay down the vocal. Well, we're doing it in Nashville because I'm tracking another record, and there is a deadline that we need to make for the Grammy committee. So we are going to track the vocal in Nashville while I'm on the road in about two weeks. And then it comes back to New York, and we mix it, get it mastered, and it will be out by the end of July. By the end of July, so you'll have another one out. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. So that's that's the whole process. Amazing. Now, through your life, I know you are incredible result and success of uh, amazing uh, singer, and performer, and magician. What is the result that took you to today's date? Like, what is it the path that you took in order to be here today? Well, the, the path. Uh, River Road tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> I left it uh, you mean like of never giving up the path of? Well, I know because there's always struggle. How did you say like I know from six years old you knew you want to oh. be a magician. Oh yeah. And then mm -hmm. you from the young age you knew you want to sing. No, that's not true. That's not true. No, I was a drummer. At a yes. young age, I wanted to I be a drummer. So I'm a very accomplished percussionist, playing with symphony orchestras and concert bands. Oh, that's and that I was a your rhythm. I was rhythm a percussion major in in college. Oh. I never sang a note, even though I heard these songs growing up. Mm -hmm. I never sang a note. In fact, if I tried, all I heard was Joe, Joe, don't, 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 don't sing. So I have, didn't think there was anything in there. Really, never even thought about it. Then, as a, as a Percussionist, I had to take a class. It was called Class Voice. And every instrumentalist, composer in the college had to take that class. If you were not a singer, you had to take that class. Mm -hmm. So I'm stuck in this class with the other musicians and we're just like, we don't really want to be here. <laughs> Let's, you know. But I thought, well, I'll make it interesting for myself. So the first song I sang was an Italian song called O Solo Mio. Yeah, right. And everyone else in the class is singing these, you know, little I don't know, folk songs that they, you can barely crank out, but I'm like cranking it out. I didn't care. I was having a good time. And the teacher just kept on bugging me and came after me and followed me everywhere I went and whenever he saw me and to ask me, please, you need to think about studying voice. You need to look into it because there's something really there. So I said, ah, leave me alone. I'm a drummer. You know. So finally one day he followed me into the restroom and that was the last straw. The I said, he's standing behind me. I'm Many like, deals <laughs> have come together in that. <laughs> so, like, mm, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. So I became a double major in my second year in college. Wow. And at the end of my second year in college, I said, well, maybe there's something here. I was discovered by the Sarasota Opera Company. And then from that? there, got scholarships to Manhattan School of Music. And That's so I went great. to New York. So it was, you know what? But I had to really look at it and say, I spent all of my life training as a percussionist. Do I want to give all that up and sing? And I thought, well, let's see. The drummers, they're always in the back. The singers, Careful. they're always in the front. <laughs> Love thy drummer. Because well, they, oh, no. well, they will be on your I'm, session. I'm still a drummer. Still a drummer. No, no, but it explains a lot of your, you have, he has perfect groove. And the studio's rhythm, like there'll be times where the, the orchestra has like a tacit or there's some sort of hold and he's got to be subdividing in your head because he never misses the downbeat. So that was great training. Yeah. And I know a lot of horn players that were drummers and they're, you know, a lot of these straight ahead jazz players mm -hmm. and their rhythm is flawless. So that explains a lot. And the yeah. same thing happened to Phil Collins too. He was originally the drummer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. he well he still the, plays drums and sings. He does. Isn't it, w w did you ever try to do that? Both? Play drums and sing? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, 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 I think I did. Just see if I could do it, you know. And uh, yeah, it wasn't too hard. Now, what was the, the most? I what is the most interesting magic trick that you ever created? Well, outside of the birds, which I think that they like animatronic handkerchiefs, mm -hmm. I love those. But I'll tell you, I know as silly as this may sound, mm -hmm. when I was seven years old, I decided I was going to do a magic show for my family. Mm -hmm. So I turned my living room into a stage. I got sheets, you know, 
put them up, taped them to the ceiling. <laughs> my family was like, what the heck is going on in there? And, and I had my sister as my assistant. You know, I just had the whole, the whole thing. But I developed a magic trick where I took my grandmother's old bench that used to sit at the edge of the end of her bed. And I said, I'm going to make that disappear. You made your grandmother disappear? Oh, no, I could never do that. <laughs> I'm still looking for her. <laughs> but, but, um, She's like 150 now. <laughs> but this, this bench, which was about, about this long and about this tall, and so I grabbed my family and said, you are now about to see one of the most amazing magic tricks you'll ever do. And I'm seven years old. I'm like really milking this thing. And so I took that chair, I put it right there in the front of the, in the living room, had my family just sit there, standing there watching, and um, I covered the table with the cloth, Show them that it was still there. Picked up the whole table, walked about five steps towards my my family, and shook the cloth, and it was gone. Now, they were amazed. My father was amazed. He couldn't believe what he saw. Everyone's looking around, trying to figure out where it went. They're going backstage. The bay window was broken. <laughs> <laughs> and no one could figure it out. And what I why I like that so much is because the mechanics that I used for that trick are the exact same mechanics they use for, 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 for professional magic tricks to make things disappear. I had no idea. I was just using my own brain. No. To, that's great illusion. I, you know, but that's not in my show. No. 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 One of the, one of the, I think one of the more breathtaking illusions I have in my show, there's actually two. One involves a very large spinning, rotating earth in the sky. It's, um, it's done in complete darkness, and all you see is the earth the globe. spinning. And I do a light show involving that globe on stage. And then the other one that I is, is the one that's definitely my favorite, and I feel it's like the centerpiece around the show, mm -hmm. is where me and my beautiful assistant are in payachi costumes. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of from the opera Arlequino of... Arlequino Pierrot. Right, this is, comes kind of from the opera Arlequino. of Payachi. Yes. Where Kanyo being 70 years old and his wife being like 14 or 15 oh, years old, right? Oh. Well, she ends up kissing someone on the stage. So we have this fight on stage. I'm pulling her hair. I'm dragging her because she's just now completely pissed me off. And, and now she's untrustworthy, right? And so there's a, it's really a, a horror, horrific scene. Like a of, 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 of like, I'm going to kill her. I'm yeah. going to really like get her. Tello. Yeah, okay. exactly. He is jealousy ended up killing his wife yes. and uh, she couldn't understand why so she ends up escaping from me and running into this this marionette box it looks like a puppet box it's very beautifully colored she goes in there she thinks she's going to be safe i'm still chasing her and she, and i go in there and i close the curtain so now she's in this box all by herself and and 10 seconds later i'm i'm singing this very powerful song called senza nishuno i'm all alone you, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. And that's the words. It's very, really Powerful. dramatic. And then I pull the cord, and she crashes down on top of 30 spikes. So what happens? You want me to tell you? The yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds familiar in my world. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, well, she ends up disappearing, and she escapes. Darn it. Oh, she escapes? Oh. And then my, my head falls off my shoulders and I catch it in my, my hands down here. See, they always have the last word. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, it. and I love the costumes. They're very elaborate. Yeah. And uh, how did you pick your costumes in order to complement the mm -hmm. show? I'll tell you, I actually designed a lot of them myself. Did you really? Yeah, I had the concept, what I wanted, and then I took it to a seamstress. Mm -hmm. But I knew what I wanted to project from the costume. And... Um, so, like, for instance, that Pagliacci costume is, like, over the top. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's, it's right. over the top. Yellow, green. Beautiful uh, Venetian colors. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and I have another uh, costume in the show that is a, supposed to be an innocent cowboy. I took the song Corin Grato, which is, means unfaithful hearted woman, mm -hmm. and uh, I turned it into a spaghetti western. <gasps> so the arrangement is, it sounds like, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. Huh. And uh, uh, I have a saloon girl that I'm I'm complaining to, like, why is it that you that you uh, say you love me today and you tease me with words of love and and then today you, you today you ignore me completely? What's going on? Of course, she's only in it for the money. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> it doesn't sound right. Oh. It doesn't. It's not right. 
But so she's just got finished with a cowboy who's all in black. And of course, my costume when I come out on stage has to be absolutely angelic white innocence. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the... So I have the concepts of what I want to pro project to what the audience. What is your favorite country to visit? That you haven't done yet. Well, or you've well, done. Oh, you've done. Well, I wouldn't know if it's my favorite. It's yes. Favorite. But on my list is Dubai because I hear it's like Las Vegas on steroids. So yeah. I'd like to I'd like to visit there. Vegas on steroids. <laughs> now, have you been to Italy? I have twice. Where? Yeah. Uh, I have been. Oh, I've been to uh, all the major cities. Mm -hmm. You know, my family still lives there. I have uh, family living in Milano. Milano. And Sicilia. Fashion Sicily. Sicily. Sicily yes. Right. Right. And so I've been to Rome and been to Venice, and, uh, and those are all great places. I mean, it's hard to pick out one that I really, really like. Um, I still want to get over there and get into the wine country because I hear Absolutely. it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've been on the other coast either. I, I think it's supposed to be really gorgeous there. Mm -hmm. So much unexplored. But uh, Italy is definitely a great place for me because I feel at home. I feel at home. We should do a show more. I so love Milan. Milan's great. Yeah. And they have a lot of things. When we were, I was there last year, there was the whole fashion thing that was going on. It was beautiful. It's a beautiful city. And, and now from the people that you would like to meet or you pa you've met already that influenced you, who they are and do you know the names? Well, Pavarotti has yeah. to be a major force because listening to him all the time and then when meeting him when he did a show. Now, uh, how did you meet him? Well, I went backstage to meet him. Yeah, basically. Where? Um, it was uh, at the Van Wezel mm -hmm. uh, in Sarasota. Did he know that you were singing? No, I told him. <laughs> what was his reaction? Hey, listen. He said, good. He said, you must speak Italian every day. Oh. I said, okay. He goes, yeah. I said, okay, good words. I'll remember that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And he, he was sitting back there, big guy, sitting good behind guy. the desk. With his big red bow tie. It's like after the Pavarotti show, he, he took <laughs> takes the, the white one off and replaces it with his whatever, you know, he, it's either a scarf or, well, this was a huge red bow tie. Yeah. I saw him at the NYU graduation where he fell asleep. Oh, mm -hmm. really? He was amazing. He did. And then he had the same, he just got up, sang flawlessly. But he was sitting there getting the honorary doctorate and just nodded off right in the middle of the graduation. <laughs> I was awesome. But you know something? It was unbelievable. I mean, he's. That, that's 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 definitely a life experience. Yeah. That's sure. incredible. And what is your um, plans for the future? How do you see yourself proceed with your magic and the show? Well, and I want to. My number one goal, and this is what I sleep, eat, and drink, uh -huh. is getting this show out there. You know, I have some contacts with with certain agents, and uh, they they've they've seen the show. They know what it is. They love it. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the opportunities now to get that show worldwide. And then eventually, I'd like it on Broadway. Mm -hmm. you know, I, um, and it's a very serious Broadway material. Oh, yes. A very serious yes. Broadway Yes, I had material. an opportunity to meet with one of Niederlander's representatives who heard about the show, mm -hmm. came down to Sarasota to meet with me and actually look at it. And uh, he was so impressed. He said he wanted to put it on Broadway for an eight-week limited engagement because he said it, he said, not only will the elites love it because of your singing, but because of the magic, the masses will come. So oh, yeah. he thought he thought the concept was unique, that Broadway needed it, because Broadway is really suffering from kind of the same same, same sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So they're looking for some fresh air, and um, I'm hoping that, yeah, in time that this will get to Broadway. Well, it is a very unique concept, I must admit, because uh, with the experience that you had, kind of like coincidence, believe it or not, things happen for the reason. Yeah. It's incredible. Did you ever have something like that happen to you, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it happened to me? All the time. All the time. All the time. You know, I don't know, things fall into my lap. I, I tell my, my crew and my staff, I'm like, you know, you'll never guess what happened. Like, yeah, well, we, we can guess. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, we will. But we're not surprised. But uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm a lucky man, fortunate, got some good people around me, mm -hmm. and uh, without good people around you, it's not, it doesn't work. You, you, you can't go very far without a great team with you. And um, Now, how, how large is your production? How many people do you have working with you? Uh, from 18 to 20. Mm -hmm. Now, on stage, I only saw two, you and your assistant, right? Right, but I have another male actor assistant, mm -hmm. and then another crew member acts as a, uh, uh, an assistant on stage. Um, he, Never was an actor, but he's so good. He's just a natural. It's mm -hmm. like, so you know, when you watch some of the videotape, you you'll see, you know, he's 
real natural. And then the one gentleman I have who is a real actor, he plays the role of Mama in my show. Mm. And he is hysterical. So <laughs> it's a comedy there. It's a big influence of comedy. Oh, a, 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 lot, of, uh, a lot of different uh, emotions, mm -hmm. for sure. The first half of my show is fun. A lot of, a lot of humor. And then the second half of the show kind of goes dark, and that's where we have the, you know, all of the, some of the uh, death, and mm -hmm. unrequited love scenes. You know, it's, it gets pretty heavy. Now, are you considering yourself happy person, emotional? What do you, yeah. what do you describe yourself? I think I have the happy gene. You do. He's I happy. do. I have the happy. He's gene. definitely on the happy side. I, I, you know, I realize I think the human body is made up of chemicals. Right. And certain people have more of certain chemicals floating <laughs> through their body. I happen to What's have a little bit more. <laughs> I happen to have a little bit more discharge of the happy chemical. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> the happy chemical. <laughs> what are your three wishes for the time to come? The what three wishes. Three wishes. I, I know you already said <laughs> last time. I go with the same one day yeah. every time. Yeah, but I want to know what would you like, you Joe Spinella, the great tenor, and also master of illusions. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's not so much about me, but it's about living in a world of peace. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I how, how come with all smart people in this world, we can't get it together? I just, it's, it's What do you think, me. like, takes it all apart? Like, in your opinion, how do you think we can put it all together? Because, you know, uh, we do also work with the United Nations, and, you know, a lot of things yeah. that, like, I, I go to meetings, and I went actually yesterday, there was a meeting on drug and on drugs and uh, on uh, violence. Well, it's got to be education. Yeah, education. You have to educate people mm -hmm. because there's so much hatred in the world. And uh, education can help that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of greed in the world. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you help that. That's like a, a human flaw or something. That's a disease. That's horrible. And, uh, but I think education is the, is, is the basic foundation of going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then if, if you would be like a mentor for someone, what would you have, like, maybe a couple things that you would suggest a person, if, for example, because I know you, you were struggling, too. You didn't have that much money, too, when you were growing up. But you became a success. And I know to get to that level, a lot of times you need uh, energy, you need uh, also financial stability. Yeah. What do you think is a way to do it maybe not as comfortable if you're financial not secure? Well, you have to have a belief system mm -hmm. that puts you in the direction that you want to go. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be very strong-willed mm -hmm. to ask for what you need and what you want. And you do whatever it takes to get that. For example, if you need money, mm -hmm. you have to ask for it. If you have to ask for large sums of money, then you form a company and you raise it with investors. Mm -hmm. But the, this country is so great that way, the opportunities mm -hmm. to do what you want to do are still intact. They're still there. It's preserved. Mm -hmm. And I say to people who, who um, need uh, uh, to understand the system, it's if there, if you have the drive and don't give up, it's there. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You know, but you have to have a belief system first that you can. Mm -hmm. And see, I never have a doubt with what I'm doing. No doubt of talent. No doubt of the people that I'm attracting into my life. I, I just know it's going to be great. Um, uh, and I'm, st I'm still there in that same place that someone could recommend the same thing to me. And I won't, I won't give up until I see my show, for example, out there. But education, belief system, and uh, taking advantage of the freedoms that we still have here in this country. Mm -hmm. Now, it, did it take you a, a while to develop your show? It's very unique. Just singing with a piano mm -hmm. and doing a couple of sleight of hand tricks. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it evolved a little bit and I thought, wow, okay. Next thing I know is I'm talking with some promoters and it's what I want to do is really not enough if I want to reach the, the grand scale of performing. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So I formed a company, raised money, created original illusions, created great music, and so here I am at that totally, at a level I never expected to be at with in terms of the complexities of the show. But it's ready now, and... Uh, and also Joe songs will be in the show. Yeah, he's well. got, I put one in now. One's already in the show. One's in the show. One coming in. And uh, I think, too, in the future, when the, when the show starts to you know, evolve even more, uh, I'm going to go more towards the crossover song. Two more wishes? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to find the love of my life. Okay. All right. And the third one. Mm. Pick two more. Mm. One more. <laughs> well, 
finding is one thing. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Then there's then to live happily ever, ever after, after in health and in peace right. and um, in happiness. That's great. Well, thank you so much, thank Joe you. and Joe. All I can be to you, as now through my heart I see. Take my hand until the very end. With each breath, my vow to love and protect. Open up your eyes and then you'll see. This is here and now. You can trust in me. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That's a Joe much. Wolfe's song. Oh, he wrote that for me. Beautiful, beautiful. And you say I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Full of love. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Beautiful. I feel it. I feel it's beautiful. <laughs> very, very nice. Thank you very much. Pop and Prescott. <laughs> For sure. Looking back, I realize it's been you. Loving me Through my fears I've learned to see And with these tears My strength to be All I can be To you